Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Cassiano Easy Math. We have here master complex fractions in three ways. So that means there are three ways to master complex fractions. So in this master lesson, you'll learn how to master solving complex fractions. And complex fraction means a fraction with the numerator and the denominator both contain fractions or series of addition and subtraction of fractions or it contains some other fractions, multiple of fractions on both numerator or denominator. So after this lesson, you should consider yourself a master in solving complex fractions. But to consider yourself a master, you have to keep practicing solving these complex fractions by following these three ways how to solve complex fractions. So let's do it. And if you notice, we have two examples over here, one in uh, red, uh, red ink and the other one in blue ink. The red ink has the highest uh, difficulty level and this one in the blue uh, in the blue ink is next to this red one in difficulty. All right, but before we uh, solve those difficult problems in in complex fractions, we going to we're going to do gradually from the easier ones to the hardest ones. Okay? Do it. So we have here problem number one or complex fraction number one. As I mentioned earlier, there are three ways in uh, in mastering complex fractions. So example number one, I think this should be this must be the easiest one to solve. All right. So the normal way of uh, solving fractions is that find the a common denominator for both fractions for all the fractions. So that's how we normally do it. So that would be the first way. And the second way is uh, doing individually its uh, denominator and the, and the numerator by finding both uh, common denominators for both numerator individually. That means independently of uh, the, uh, the other way or independently in terms of numerator or the denominator. And the third way to solve is the what I call the butterfly method, where you're just multiplying, crisscrossing the numerator and denominators. All right, so let's do this. So if you notice, the numerator is a complex fraction, is a series of fractions, same thing on the denominator. So in here, so we have to, we have to find a common denominator to solve this problem right here. So if you take a look at the denominators, these are all even numbers, 16, 8, 4, and 12. So we're going to find a common denominator for both numerator and the denominator. So in this case, since so these are all even, we can, can have a multiple of, let's say, investigate the denominators that 16 is the highest. These are all divisible by any of these denominators, 16. So we put 16 right here. Okay, so multiply the whole thing by 16. Numerator and denominator the same way. So this is what I call, or what what normally is called special factors. It's because 16 divided by 16, it will be one. So 16 divided by 16 is one. So it won't affect the fraction at all. Okay, so let's do it. So 16 multiplied to the first term, 16 times 1, 8. So 16 by divided by 8, that's what it means. So that is 2 times 1. Or let's simply do it, do this. Okay, expanded form. So that's 1, 8 times 16 plus 3, 16 times 16. Divide by 16 to the first numerator right there. Uh, first term, 3 fourth times 16 minus 1 half times 16. Okay. We move ahead and simplify. 16 divided by 8 is 2 plus 16 by 16 is 1. What's left? 3 divided by 16 divided by 4 is 4 times 3, 12, minus 16 divided by 2 is 8, times 1 is 8. So, we have here 
2 plus 3 is 5. 12 minus 8 is 4. So the answer is 5 fourth. So answer here is 5 over 4 or 1 and 1 fourth. That's the answer. So that's the first way to solve this uh, complex fractions. The second way is we have to get the common denominator for individually, independently of the numerator and the denominator. What, the, what does it mean by that? So let me show you. So we have to rewrite the problem again on here. So if you take a look right there, I have rewritten the, the, uh, the same problem over here. Now what we have to do is we do the numerator independently of the of the numerator or the denominator. That means we do this first independently. Take a look at the denominator. This is 16, this is 8. So what you have to do is make the denominator the same. So what would you do with 8 to make it the same as 16? So multiply by 2, right? Okay, let's do that. So 1 8 times times 2 over 2. That's a special factor again. Since 2 divided by 2 becomes 1, so you won't affect the fraction. So that is uh, multiplied by, by 2. What you do on the numerator, you should do on the denominator. That's why you have to do multiply 2 divided by 2. So plus 3, 16. But by, on here, we have 2 and 4. Make your denominator 4. What would you do on this uh, term right here? Multiply by 2, right? So you have that one. So 3 divided by 4 minus 1 half times, make it 4, so the, times 2 to make it 4. So the, they would be the same, 4 as the denominator. So once again, you have divide, multiply by 2 divided by 2. Okay, so let's go ahead and simplify. So since the big, big 8 times 2 is 16, so that's we combine that one now into just one denominator, that's 16 since 60 and 16 is the same so all you have to do is combine and what do you have in the numerator of this that will become 1 times 2 is 2 plus 3 then the denominator you have that one right there this becomes 4 already so this combine the denominator so since they have both the same denominator now 4 you just put into one denominator right there and what we have to just yes, 3 minus 2 times 1 is 2. Okay. What we have to do next now is just simplify. 2 plus 3 is 5 over 16. All divided by 3 minus 2 is 1. 1 fourth. Solve it further. We have now to, to change this division to a multiplication. And then we proceed uh, invert, inverting this uh, denominator over here of 1 fourth become 4 over 1. All right. So just do that. 5, 16 multiplied by the inverse of this or the reciprocal of this denominator, the whole denominator. 1 fourth become 4 over 1. 4 over 1 or 4. Now go ahead and just multiply both the numerator and the denominator. So 5 times 4 is 20. 5 times 4 is 20. That's 20 divided by 16 times 1 is 16. So that's 20 over 16. And we can still reduce this one right here. So divide by 2. Okay. Divide by 2 both. So that's 10 over 8. And yet we can still reduce that to the lowest term. Divide by 2 again. The same way so actually at first divide by 4 earlier so I'll just keep going divide by 2 all right that's 5 10 divided by 2 is 5 8 divided by 2 is 4 so 5 4 4 is equal to 1 and 1 fourth since if you divide 5 divided by 4 that will be 1 times 4 and 1 and 1 for remainder 1 and over the denominator so it becomes 1 and 1 fourth okay so if you notice we we arrive at the same answer compared to the earlier earlier solution that's what we have right there 5 fourth or 1 and 1 fourth so we got the same answer right here so that's uh, that's the answer 
And there's another way, the third way, to solve this problem right here. Let's do it. It's called the butterfly method. We go ahead and write the problem again over here. So if you notice, I have rewritten down again the same problem as we, what we have earlier. So 1 8 plus 3 is 16, divided by 3 over 4 minus 1 half. So that's the same thing as, as previously. That's the same thing as that. So. All right, so th these are the same. All right, okay, so let's go ahead and solve the problem. Well, what we do is uh, the butterfly method is all you have to do is multiply all the terms. Right here, right here, right here, crisscross. So that means multiply this numerator, numerator one to the denominator of the second term and the other way around the same way. And multiply the uh, denominators by themselves. The same way on the denominator over here. All right, so let's do that. So, let's do on the, the numerator. 16 times one, 16. Plus, eight times three is 24. Multiply eight times 16. So, eight times 16. Then the denominator, so two times three, six. Minus carry over sign. Four times one is four. Divided by 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify. So 16 plus 24, how much is that? It's 40, right? It's 40. Divided by 8 times 16. All divided by 6 minus 4 is 2. Divided by 8. All right, we have at this... Uh, instance where we can reverse the, uh, the denominator now and we, the division becomes multiplication. This division bar will become uh, multiplication and we have to do the reciprocal of the denominator. Okay, so what will be? It will be 40 but by 8 times 16 multiplied by the uh, reciprocal of this. So 2 over, two over 8 become 8 over 2. So 8 over 2. Okay, what you have now, 8 divided by 8, cancel that. And we have 40 divided by 2. That's 20. And 20 divided by 16 is what we have left. So that's 20 divided by 16. And once again, we're going back to where we, where we were earlier. If you notice that 20 over 16 will be reduced to the same way, 5 over 4, by dividing that into divided by 4. In the same way, right? So divide by 4. The same way on the denominator, divide by 4. Since we did divide by 2, divide by 2 twice. So in here, we know that already. So 20 divided by 4 is 5. 16 divided by 4. Is four or one and one four so they have all the same answers all right so you have three ways to solve this uh, example number one first one is find the common denominator for both the numerator and the denominator and the second way to solve is finding uh, the dynamic common denominator independently of the other so that means find the, uh, the common denominator for the numerator independently of the denominator and find the common denominator for the denominator like what we have over here and the third one is the butterfly method all right so there are three ways okay let's do another example now we're going to solve that problem presented earlier when we started this lesson two third plus one fifth minus two seven all divided by one half minus three fifth plus four so that was the problem presented earlier so that's the one that we have, all right? So this fraction involves a string of fractions on the numerator and the denominator, okay? Let's solve it. If we investigate the problem over here, the uh, complex fractions, what we have to do to approach complex fractions is take a look at their denominators and find a common denominator that uh, is possible for, for all of the fractions involved 
to get a common denominator for all of them. Let's say this one right here, we have 7, 5, 3, 4, 3, 2. We have almost have all kinds of numbers, all different numbers. So in getting this uh, problem solved, all you have to do is get the common denominator over here. What should be the common denominator? So 3, 5, 7, 4, 5, 2. Thinking about uh, this denominator's uh, common denominator over here is multiply the denominators. That's all we can do. So we have here, these are the same 5 and 2 and 4 can be can be carried over. We have this one right here. We have 3, I mean 7, 3, 5, 4, and 2. But since our aim now here is to deal with smaller numbers, so we deal with 2 right here instead of 4, so we get a lower values of numbers we deal with. And we cannot get 4 because 4 over 1, the denominator is 1, not 4. Okay, so we multiply the whole thing with all these uh, numbers. So that means 2, 3, 5, 7. So multiply the whole thing. 2, 3, 5, 7. It's 2, 3, 5, 7. Multiply the whole thing, all the terms. Please do it. So first term, 2 thirds. Multiply by this. 2, 3, 5, 7. Plus second term, 1 fifth. Multiplied by 2, 3, 5, 7. Third term, minus 2, 7. Multiplied by the same number. 2, 3, 5, 7. And the denominator, 1 half. Multiplied by this. Okay, times 2, 3, 5, 7. Second term, 3 fifths. Multiply by the same thing. 2, 3, 5, 7. Last term. It's 4 or 4 over 1. The same way. So times 4. 4 times. 2, 3, 5, 7. Okay. What we have to do now is simplify the whole thing. So take a look at the first term. We can cancel 3. What we have now. So 2 times 2 is 4. So, 4, 5, 7, plus, on here, cancel 5, what do you have left? 2, 3, and 7. 2 times 3 times 7. Minus third term, cancel 7 right there. What you have now? 2 and 2, that's make, that makes 4 already. So, 3, 4, 5. 3 times 4 times 5. Denominator, 1 half, cancel something, just cancel 2. So, 3, 5, 7. 3 times 5 times 7 minus second term cancel 5 so you have 2 and 3 this is 9 now 3 times 3 is 9 so what you have now is 2 7 9 third term just all that one right there so we can, you can combine those as 8 now 4 times 6 is 8 so what you have now 3 Five, seven, and eight. In the meaning, I uh, I leave all of this in uh, in all separate uh, numbers. It'll be so it would be much easier to cancel numbers early than multiplying the whole the whole thing two three five two three five seven and all that. So we have to deal with simpler ways how to deal with this string of numbers. Okay, so now we have to simplify. 4 times 5 times 7, 7 times 5 35 times 4, 5 times 4 is 20 times 7, this is 140 I should say, it's 140, plus here, 2 times 3 is 6 times 7 is 42, minus 5 times 4 is 20 times 3, 60, right, 60. Let's go ahead and get the denominator. So, 7 times 5, 35 times 3 is 105. Alright, minus 9 times 7, 63 times 2, that's uh, 126. 
right? Nine times seven, sixty-three. Sixty-three, so one hundred twenty-six plus. So this one right here, seven times eight, uh, that's fifty-six, and this one is three times five is fifteen. So fifty-six times fifteen. That's eight forty. Yeah, fifty six times fifteen. Thirty three twenty five twenty eight six five fourteen carry one that's eight forty. So now simplify it further. So that's one forty minus one what sixty over here. So that's eighty. Eighty plus forty two one twenty two. Divide by look at this right here 126 840 right so 9 945 minus 126 so 819 see that the 840 105 that is 945 minus 126 then it's 9 3 it's 1 it's 8 819 Okay, so is there any way we can uh, reduce this answer to lowest term? Not anymore, All right? So that's, so that's the answer for that. So that's just the first solution of doing this out of the three, okay? Do the second solution to this problem. Okay, what I mean was is, is that uh, we do the butterfly method. So in here, in doing the butterfly method, since you got three terms for each numerator and the denominator, all we have to do is choose which one first. So we combine this first right here. Okay, let's rewrite the uh, problem again. It's two thirds plus one fifth minus two over seven divided by one half minus three fifth plus four. Okay, butterfly method works. Since you got three, three strings of uh, uh, three fractions in a series for each term, for each numerator denominator, we decide to just do this first, and do this two first, and then proceed with the other one. So what we do is crisscross again, crisscross that. So in here, so five times two is ten, plus three times one is three, three times five is fifteen minus the third term, 2 over 7. And here, the denominator, 5 times 1 is 5, minus 2 times 3 is 6, 5 times 2 is 10, plus 4. Okay, simplify it further over here. We have 10 plus 3 is 13, over 15, minus 2 over 7, all divided by 5 minus 6, this negative 1 over 10 plus 4. 4 is the same way. 4 over 1, that's the same way. So I just put divided by 1 right there. 4 over 1. Now once again, we'll have to do the butterfly again the same way in here. Okay. So, 13 times 7. Okay, just put 13 times 7 over there. 15 times 2 is 30. Divide by 7 times 15 all over 1 times 1 is 1, negative 1, plus 10 times 4 is 40. All divide by 10 times 1 is 10. Okay, it's equal to, simplify that one right there. 13 times 7, how is that? 7 times 321, 2, that's 91, minus 30. So that's 91, see this is 91 minus 30. So that is 61. Seven times 15, it's 105, right? Okay, 105. Divide by 39, 40 minus one is 39 over 10. Just go ahead and simplify over here. So 61 over 105. Copy it again, divide by 39 over 10. So this is the whole division right there. And 
to reverse this, uh, simplify, change the division to multiplication, and get the reciprocal of the new denominator, right? So 61 over 105 times 10 over 39 now. So in here, can we factor anything? Yes, we do. But by 5, right? Okay, divide by 5, the numerator and the denominator. So 10 divided by 5 is 2. So that means that's equal to 61 times 2. 10 divided by 5 is 2, okay? And then 1 of 5 divided by 5, how much? 1. Okay, let's do it. That's 39 times 21. So we're dealing with big numbers over here. What we have left now, 21 times 2 divided by 39 times 21. So that is 61 times 2 divided by 39 times 21. 61 times 2 is so 122. So 122. 2 times 1, 6, 12. So 122. And 39 times uh, 21. That's 819, right? 819. So 39 times 21. So that's 39. 18 kilo 17. So 819. So 819. Okay, so that's the answer. That's what we got. If you remember our answer earlier, so 122 divided by 819. So we found it got the same way, right? Now we're on the third uh, way in solving this complex fraction. So the third way is getting the the common denominator independently of the uh, the numerator. What does it mean by that? It's like the same thing earlier. So we have three five seven over here. Multiply this by three five seven individually. Okay. So so two thirds multiplied by the other denominator are these denominators. So times 5 times 7, okay, plus 1 fifth times the other denominators, 3 and, three and 7, multiplied by 3 and 7. So all you have to do is divide by the same number right here, but by 3 times 7, same way. Multiply that, then minus 2 7 times the other denominators are 3 and 5, so 3 and 5. Okay. The numerator, this is 4 or 4 over 1, this is the same thing. So the first, first uh, term, 1 half, divide by the other denominator, that means 5. 5 over 1 is, oh, is uh, negligible, so that's times 5 over 5 minus 3 over 5 times the other denominator is 2 so that's 2 over 2 since 2 over 2 is 1 the same thing over here and the same all the rest of those multipliers now third term 4 over 1 times what are the other denominators 2 and 5 so 2 and 5 for 2 and 5 okay now what we have to do is simplify in here. We have a common denominator now of 3, 5, 7, right? Take a look at the denominator. So that is 3 times 5 times 7. That's the denominator. All right. And what you have here is uh, 2 times 5 times 7. That's 35 times 2, right? 7 times 5 is 35. So 2 times 35 and plus do you have here now 3 times 7 7 times 3 is 21 we do it 21 now and minus third term 2 times 3 times 5 2 times 3 is 6 times 5 30 okay divide by the denominator so all the denominator for all of this now it'll become a little bit 10 right 10 2 times 5 is 10, so they have, they have common denominators now, okay? So this is our aim, so that's 10. 1 times 5 is 5, minus 3 times 2, 6, plus 4 times 2, 8, times 5. 
that's 40, right? 8 times 5, 40. Okay. Now what we have here now. Okay, so 2 times 35, that is 70, right? That's 70 right there. That's 70. So we have here now 70 plus 21 minus 30 divided by 7 times 5. 35 times 3, that's 105, right? So 105. All over, we have here now 5 minus 6 plus 40 all over 10 okay so we go and simplify this one right here so 30 minus uh, 70 minus 30 that's 40 plus 21 that's 40 plus 21 that's 61 over 105 divide by 5 minus 6 is minus 1 negative 1 40 that's 39 divided by 10 so if we go further that's 61 over 105. Now we go to convert this division to multiplication. So we had to get the reciprocal of that. It will become 10 over 39. Okay. So we arrive at the same numbers like earlier. So once again, divide by 5, the same thing, divide by 5. So that's 5. So 61 times 2 again. 10 divided by 5 is 2, 61 times 2, 105 divided by 5. We get the same same answer over here now. Okay. So that's 39. And 105 divided by 5 is 21, right? So that's 21. So 61 times 2, so 122. Over 39 times 21 is 819. So we get the same number. We get the same answer. All right, so now let's solve the hardest one, the the most uh, complex fractions that we had earlier, the one written in red ink. Okay, so let's go ahead. And if whenever you notice this kind of uh, really complex fractions, the uh, denominator is another complex fraction. And at the same time, one of the terms is a complex fraction. So a fraction in a fraction in a fraction. All right, let's do it. Uh, so what we have to do now is at fir first simplify the fraction of the denominator, whichever has the most fractions. So this one right here. And keep going is step by step up to the time they reduce this fraction into like this kind of term. All right, so first is re reduce this term right here. Okay, this whole term right here. Okay, so we write it down again over here. So... 1 over 1 half plus 2 fifth. So the easiest way to do this is to the butterfly. So that is 1 over 5 times 1 is 5 plus 2 times 2 is 4 all over 5 times 2 is 10. It's equals to 1 over 5 plus 4 is 9 divided by 10. And that is 1 multiplied by the reciprocal of that so that's 10 over 9 or equal to 10 over 9 okay, so we have reduced that one right there that's that's considered 10 over 9 okay now we have to move on and rewrite the problem over here again so if you take a look this we just reduced this into a simple fraction right here to 10 over 9 okay and I have rewritten this number this uh, complex fraction on top so that's what we have now 10 over 9 that's the one earlier the next step will be reducing this complex fraction over here again so, so that is 1 over 2 minus 10 over 9 so doing this again we do the butterfly, that's the easiest way to do it, right? So that is 1 over, this 2 right here is the, the same as 2 over 1, okay? So butterfly, so 9 times 2, 18, minus 1 times 10, is 10, minus, all over 9 times 1 is 9. So that is equal to 1 
all over 18 minus 10 is 8 over 9 and that is 1 times the inverse of this reciprocal it's 9 over 8 or simply 9 over 8 so that's the value of that now 9 over 8 okay so we simplify this complex fractions further so we move on and supply this equivalent of this complex fraction right here. We write the problem again. So that's one half minus two thirds all over three fifth plus what's this equivalent is nine over eight. And now we have reduced the the very complex fraction into a little a little less complex fraction over here now. And what we do now is solve the problem by butterfly method so 3 times 1 is 3 it's minus 2 times 2 is 4 3 times 2 6 all over 8 times 3 is 24 plus 9 times 5 45 divided by 8 times 5 is 40 okay now simplify further 3 minus 4 is 1, negative, over 6, all over 24 plus 45. How many is that? So that's 69, divided by 40. Now we get to the inverse of that now. Negative 1, 6, division becomes multiplication. Get the reciprocal, that's 40 over 69. Bring down over here. So. 1, 6 times 40 over 69 divided by 2 on both okay numerator denominator 40 divided by 2 is 20 so 1 times 20 6 divided by 2 is 3 so 3 times 69 so that's 1 times 20 is 20 69 times 3 how much is that 207 right 207 so that's the answer okay so 20 over 207 is the answer there's no way you can reduce that one right here now because this is even number and the other one is a number so that's the final answer uh, we just finished this uh, number three uh, complex fractions the most complex of all among the three so in here you can do I don't have to finish all the other 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 ways since you already know so once you reduce that those fractions into a string of fractions, the numerator and the denominator, all you can do now is we are summing up this lesson now, this lecture. So on the third example, I don't need to I don't have to proceed to the other two ways since you already know. All you have to do is follow those this procedure in solving complex fractions. First find the common denominator for all that means the numerator and the denominator. That's the first step. There's the first way. And the second way is uh, is do the butterfly method or the other one. The uh, Find the uh, independent uh, denominator, common denominator for for the numerator independently. And the, uh, the denominator, find a common denominator independently also. Okay, so that should be all for today. And that ends our lecture. Now I know what you're thinking. After learning this kind of techniques, all the fractions would be a lot more easier after this now, right? So go ahead and subscribe. Now it's up to you now to master this uh, solving uh, complex fractions in three ways. And do it and practice so you can become a master. Thanks for watching. And if you learned something good from this video and hopefully inspire you to master something like this one and apply it in your daily life or at school in your class, on your personal advancement in life or at work i encourage you guys to subscribe to my channel even though you may not visit my channel again for whatever reason you have by subscribing to, to my channel that would mean a lot to me so you can have more videos uh, mathematically very enriching videos in the future all right thanks for your time and have a great day